First up will be John Warner with the Waco Tribune Herald. Hey, Jared, how you doing? How you doing? You doing all right? Doing good. Uh, you, you were named Big 12 Preseason pre Player of the Year. Tomorrow they're going to announce the, uh, the the team predictions, and you guys will probably be predicted as the uh, favorite. Uh, do you all like those kind of expectations? What's kind of your feeling about that? Uh, do we like him? Yeah, just because we work hard and we're, you know, just – a bunch of people trying to be the best people we can be. And, um, yeah, do we like the recognition? Yeah. Does it mean a whole lot? Does it carry a lot of weight? I don't think so. It's just kind of some some paper, um, some things that's written down on paper that don't mean a whole lot. So that's kind of where it stands for me and I think for the rest of the team. Uh, do, do you see that as pressure or uh, just as another thing? Yeah, I, I, I guess it's pressure for sure. But one of the things that's really – um, one of the things that I learned throughout the year and just playing at Baylor, like there's always pressure to do something, um, no matter whether it's pressure to be good, pressure to win the Big 12, pressure to, you know, um, win, win the Big 12. Um, it's just always going to be pressure. And um, so now I look at this pressure as like as if I was a pressure, the pressure my freshman year of playing and trying to be good, like this is the same amount of pressure. So um, that's the way I look at it. Thank you. All right, next question is from Stephen Hawkins with the Associated Press. I'm going to back this up a little bit, just a little more. Here we go. You know, Jared, I thought you young guys knew all about all this technology stuff, or is this too old old man stuff for you? No, it's not. Not at all. It's just um, – You've got the iPad going. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Hey, if John Warren can figure it out, any of us can figure it out. So. <laughs> hey, um, just the way last season ended, and, and you guys not being able to finish what you, wanted, you had started and where you were going – how much more does that add to, to just wanting to play the season? And obviously with you and uh, Maceo coming back, being able to have a chance to do it again together, just talk about what it means and how do you kind of control that emotion to get ready for it? Yeah, I think um, for us, it means that like we, we kind of don't take things for granted. Um, we realize that, you know, when we have a group of guys together and, um, you know, it's a season that we're going through, it means a lot. Like it, it holds a lot of weight and, um, I just remember last season when the season ended, it was just very sad because we thought these guys won't, it won't be the same group of guys again. So now we're not even more trying to take it just um, with a grain of salt, everything that we do and just the relationships that we have. And um, yeah, I think the season is going to take care for, take care of it for itself. But, um, you know, just, just treasuring the moment has been one of the points of emphasis since last year. Last question I'll ask right now. How much in your head, though, when all this was going on after March and in April, how much did you play the what if in your head about, geez, what if we'd been able to do this? What, you know, I mean, obviously we all thought you had a really good team. Yeah, a lot of what ifs. Uh, I didn't I didn't do it a whole lot because it was just so mind boggling about how this season just ended. Like what? We didn't play the NCAA tournament like that. That never crossed our minds, anybody's mind. And um that was just really heavy on me. And I was just wondering about um, what what next is um, going to be out of our control. What next is going to happen that we're just like, what? Like, that's that happened. So, um, no, I didn't play a lot of what ifs. But do I think we, we could have won the national championship? Yes, without a doubt. All right, man. Thanks, bud. No problem. Next question from Kendall Cow with our daily Bears. No. Congrats on winning Big 12 preseason player of the year, man. Appreciate it. Uh, wanted to pick up on something you mentioned about your freshman season. Uh, that November and December, you all were struggling. Makai, Tristan get injured in January. Things aren't going well. Yet January, February, March, you really turn it on and have a great uh, campaign. So my question with that is, what about kind of that experience helped you become the preseason Big 12 Player of the Year? And is there anything about that season that you think sets you up well for the challenges of kind of playing in this pandemic era? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, man, playing just your freshman year and being thrown in the fire and um, – and having to be relied upon for, you know, baskets and just, you know, different responsibilities that that puts you in position to be just so well a season throughout the rest of your years. And um, I, I'm just thankful for the opportunity that I had my freshman year because I, I gained so much experience. And um, yeah, and I learned a lot of just a lot of things that I can go on and on about just the game of basketball and about college basketball. And um, I'm, I'm just fortunate enough to be in a position where I can win preseason player of the year. Um, so it's, 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 it's been awesome. And I'm just thankful for the whole, whole the way it went ever since I got to Baylor. All right. Thanks, Jared. I appreciate it.
Next question from Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Jared, being named to that NCAA committee, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not sure what the word would be, but that's a pretty heavy responsibility to be kind of the voice for all student athletes. How serious do you take that? What, you know, what, uh, I guess an honor was it even to be named to that committee? Yeah, it's very, um, very high demanding and very serious thing that I, um, that I had to kind of take responsibility of. And, um, and through it all, it's, it's been very comforting to know that there's people higher up that are willing to listen to our voice and, and, and let us have a voice through the whole process of making decisions and things like that. And, um, I, and I've been able to um, really have a voice and, and they've listened to me and they've been really wanting to hear what I have to say about different topics, like especially during COVID and um, playing seasons and opting out and stuff like that. Um, so I've been taking it real serious and trying to get the, the best um, – the best um, view on, on all stances for, for all athletes. You know what I mean? Is this the first step to becoming like an athletic director? Or yeah. Uh, yeah. There, or there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of athletic directors on the, uh, on the call that are, you know, in the meetings. And um, I'm always like, Hey, like, remember me, if I need a job, remember me. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next question from Paul Catalina with Sikkim 365. Jared, this team, obviously, a lot of the same guys are back, but you've got a lot of new guys. How different do you think that you guys will look uh, from the players that we haven't seen play uh, in, in games yet? Yeah, we got some new guys, um, especially Adam Flagler is a guy who is going to be tremendous, um, raised a lot of eyebrows. Um, Jonathan, he's going to come in, and you're going to be surprised by his athleticism, his ability. Um, you know, um, even LJ, I think, can come in and, and do some things that, you know, people might not expect them to do. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be, I don't think a totally different team, um, but I do think there's going to be different faces that bring different elements of the game and, and maybe our play style might be a little different. Um, so that's the only thing I can kind of tell you that it might change just because of different people and different things like that. Next question from Kevin Longquist with SickumSports.com. Congratulations, by the way, on the winning the preseason honor. I know that's even though what you said, what you said, it's still kind of nice to have that in your back pocket. Yeah. Um, yeah. This schedule, this non-conference schedule that you guys are going to play, some unannounced, some announced, but these challenges, I mean, this is what this program who wants to play for a national title plays games like this. So what's been the mindset of getting ready for whoever you're going to face, whether it's going to be Villanova, Illinois, Michigan, obviously, you know, you're going to be facing Auburn, but What's that like in getting ready for something like this? Because it's going to be basically a pretty brutal stretch for you guys uh, yeah. to get off the, to get to start this season. But something that you guys can obviously take from it as you hope to pursue a national championship. Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing we've we've kind of created was that um, through the whole pandemic, there's either going to be you know um, bust people that are like just get destroyed by the circumstances that, the, that we've been placed in or people that thrive throughout the circumstances. And we've always been trying, been, been trying to be the team that, that comes out of the situation on top and comes out and takes advantage of, of the opportunity. And, um, you know, that's our biggest theme right now because everybody's going through the same thing. Everybody's going through the rainy days of the COVID and uh, we're trying to be a team that's, you know, ready when the sun starts shining. And um, that's been our approach throughout the whole practice, all the practices and, and through the upcoming games. And then real quickly, Scott had mentioned about you're wanting to improve your shooting percentage uh, from the two point and, and, the, and from the arc, anything that you've done mechanical to try and change that, or is it just more reps in the, in the, uh, in the gym sh with just shoots or shots or what are you, what are you working on as far as that's concerned? Yeah. Um, mechanically, I think um, just my leg placement and the way I've been my knees is something I've changed a little bit. Um, but other than that, picking my right spots and um, you know, with the game and me being getting older, the game slowed down. So that's helped me a lot too. But um, yeah, just picking my spots, um, making sure I have good feet when I shoot and um, you know, just hope for the best. But other than that, it's been, it's about, been about it. All right, thank you. Next question from Nate Smith with the Baylor Larry. All right, so Jared, obviously the news came out earlier today about y'all representing the U.S. at next year's World University Games. What does it mean to you to get the opportunity to represent the country at that level? Oh, that's an extremely um, huge honor. Um, 
it's pretty cool to think about that we like they chose us Baylor as as a representative um I, I think you know we're the right school for it I think we have the great guys um we're going to represent ourselves um in a, in a great fashion and I think it's going to be an opportunity for us to learn about the culture in um in China and um you know I'm, uh, it's, it's it's it seems like a pretty great idea for me